All creatures organize their metabolic machinery into small organizational packets called cells. Some organisms are just simple single cells, uh, but humans have billions and billions of cells, each specialized and complex. Humans are all full of all sorts of complex regulatory sy systems. Therefore, pharmacology is very, 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 very complex. So it's not my fault that pharmacology is such a difficult subject. It's, it's your fault. So this is a cartoon of a cell, and we'll look inside of the picture of the cell. Look, you can tell the little piece of the cell has been cut away, so we can see all the neat insides of the cell. And anytime there's something round and on the inside of something, in Latin we call that a nucleus. Right, so there's the nucleus of the cell. The nucleus is the cell's control center where the plans for protein synthesis are. The plans for protein synthesis are coded in the DNA. Nucleus is singular, singular. Nuclei is plural. Nuclear is an adjective. Please do not confuse the word nucleus with nucleolus. Nucleolus is where ribosomal RNA is stored, and ribosomes are proteins that manufacture proteins, and hopefully I will say that 100 times before the semester is over. There are the cartoons of our mitochondria. Uh, mitochondria produce ATP for the cell, and they produce ATP for the cell using electron transport. Uh, moving electrons is the key to energy utilization in the cells. All right, so we think of moving electrons as like the wind and the cell and all its machinery like the windmills so it can capture the energy from the moving electrons. And so capture the energy from the moving electrons in something called electron transport and the end product of that, one of the many end products of that, is ATP, which is the, our energy currency for the cell. When I was sitting in class trying to stay awake, I wanted ATP to be the energy currency of the cell, and I didn't want it to do anything else, because that would certainly be easier, and that's not the case at all. And as we go through this, you'll see that your body multitasks for the little parts. Uh, you can take a brick and build a building with it and say, oh, what do you do with bricks? Well, you build buildings with them. Well, you know, you can build barbecues and you can build sidewalks and you can do other things with bricks besides build buildings, and your body does the same thing. All right, so ATP is going to do more than just be the energy currency of the cell. That's a good place to start. This is very interesting. Mitochondrial and mitochondria have their own DNA and your mitochondrial DNA comes 100% from your mother. You do not get your mitochondria from your father. You get your mitochondria from your mother. A mitochondria are thought to be originally derived from endosymbiotic prokaryotes, endo inside, symbiotic, meaning a symbiotic relationship where one depends on the other. Prokaryotes are cells, ancient cells, without nuclei. Right. And so what they think happened is a, a, a bacteria entered into a cell and started producing a substance that was beneficial to that cell, and that cell uh, provided the nutrients to make the mitochondria go, and the symbiosis has been going on ever since. All right, there's my mitochondria, I'm sure from the distance, mitochondrion. From a distance, it looks like a little footstep, but you can see the little things called Christae, Christi, depending on who you argue with. Mitochondrion, the singular, mitochondria plural, mitochondrial is the adjective. Let's talk about endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi. In this class, it's just all the same stuff. In other classes, it's all different, all right? But it's a network of pouches and tubes that store and transport proteins in the cell. They're going to modify and repackage these proteins and, and release them from the cell. So that gets us to endoplasmic reticulum. There is rough endoplasmic reticulum, and rough endoplasmic reticulum is called rough because of the ribosomes attached to endoplasmic reticulum. So if you have ribosomes attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, it will give it, give it a rough look, hence rough endoplasmic reticulum. 
So the ribosomes of rough endoplasmic reticulum make membrane-bound proteins. The endoplasmic reticulum uh, has a phospholipid bilayer running through the inside of the cell, and the ribosomes just go ahead and make the proteins in the membrane, and then they're transported out to the surface without all the hand-waving. Hence, smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes. Who knew? It was just that simple. And this is rough endoplasmic reticulum, and I can't see that from the back of the room, so we'll blow it up a little bit. That's All right, so this is the endoplasmic reticulum. This is inside of the tube. That's outside of the tube, so that would be the cytosol. So this is rough endoplasmic reticulum, and hopefully you can see those little dots on the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. And what are those dots called? Ribosomes. Great.